Okay, hi and welcome to a quick tour through Opencast 2.1 which has uh, just been released today. So uh, if you want to know what new features are in an Opencast version, you really should head to the official Opencast documentation which can be found at docs.opencast.org and you want to have a look at the administration guides for the latest stable version which is at the moment 2.1 so let's take 2.1 here and uh, they can find the release notes so I'm not going to read through all of the uh, release notes for you uh, just head to this page and read it for yourself uh, but having a short look at the new features the one that's probably most important is this one and that is uh, we switched our basic OSGI architecture uh, and we did it by uh, merge, uh, moving over from uh, Apache Felix to Apache Caref. This has a lot of implications for uh, how to build Opencast, uh, how to uh, configure Opencast and uh, how the file structure in the backend is, but we'll have a look at that later. And apart from that, there are several smaller, uh, sorry, several smaller features to the new admin UI. Um, there's some small backend features, and then there's uh, some new translations. So, for example, we now have a Chinese translation. Uh, also, in this documentation, you will uh, find really, really important notes for administrators. So. Uh, what changed in the configuration. So so if you're going to uh, upgrade your Opencast version to 2.1, you really should read this. Also there's the how to upgrade documentation. So uh, going back from the docs and heading to uh, where you can find Opencast or download Opencast, uh, this is a Bitbucket repository. As usual, you can download Opencast from Bitbucket and uh, this is a page uh, all the emails and uh, release announcement linked and what's really important do not download this this is uh, the current state of the uh, developed branch in the repository so it's basically the development version you want to add to text and here you can see the latest releases also today uh, there was a release of Opencast 2.0.2 as maintenance release for to Opencast 2.0. Um, we really really recommend to uh, go to Opencast 2.1 instead because this has a couple of bug fixes for uh, Opencast 2.0.1. This has a lot more bug fixes and uh, it some really really cool features you want to have for uh, Opencast 2.x. Okay, so just download this and uh, you should be ready to go. But yeah, now let's have a look at the actual Opencast. So uh, I'm uh, here at the uh, test server located at the University of Osnabrück. Uh, you can actually use this if you want and then log in uh, using the username admin and the password is as usual Opencast. So let's log in. And one of the most obvious features uh, that have been added in 2.1 in the new admin UI is this one. You haven't seen this before, so Opencast 2.0 didn't have it. And um, you might have seen something kind of similar in the old uh, 1.x versions of Opencast where you had these tabs uh, saying okay we have so many uh, finished recordings and so on and so forth but uh, this is a little bit different this is actually a filter applied to this table so uh, actually last time I flogged in I used one of these filters so I can remove it in here and then say okay please filter this table and show me all the um, recordings that have been failed so I got these this ones here and this is really really nice because uh, you can see by one glance if there are new uh, recordings that have been uh, that have failed in the system and you can just uh, click on this and filter this so for now let's remove this again and for the next things we probably want to have finished recordings 
because some other things that have been added is for example the assets tab down here and uh, you can now see what's actually in uh, a media package uh, uh, associated with an event and you can easily go to this and download things and so on but as I said more or less small features that have been added um, another new thing or well an old new thing is that uh, in opencast uh, 1.x there have always been uh, documentation for the opencast rest apis which are basically the apis used by developers of other systems to talk to opencast and um, if you if you're logged in as administrator like i'm now uh, you will see these help menu uh, in the top right corner of opencast.mini.i and so we'll now again find the REST docs API um, which is just a documentation for each and every uh, REST endpoint opencast has and uh, if we would just take one for example the capture agent uh, endpoint you'll see all the uh, ways to talk to opencast so this is actually how our capture agent would talk to opencast and you can live uh, test this uh, by sending some data and so on. But uh, we won't do that at the moment. Uh, we are not a capture agent. Uh, finally, there have been some small fixes and um, uh, new features to the front end, so the user front end, which means basically the player. And probably the uh, well let's just take a, a video from here and probably the most obvious uh, when I start playing this back uh, the most obvious is probably this one which now lets you adjust the playback time so uh, let's make it a little bit faster and as you can see the video now runs faster which is kind of nice if you have uh, lectures who talk really really slow you can make them faster or if you have uh, materials that's really hard to understand you can slow the video down and we hope that it will help you to understand uh, the video content okay but now let's go to the back end where uh, as i said before the main feature uh, is kind of hidden <coughs> So here I did just a uh, build of Opencast 2.1. You would still do this by just running in the main directory uh, maven clean install. I'm not actually doing this right now because it would take a quite a while, but um, as you see, I've just done it. Um, so nothing really different here. The only thing that's different, if you want to have an admin node before, you would need to uh, specify which profiles you would want to build to so you kind of stick different uh, profiles together to build an admin node. Um, this was kind of confusing for users because no one really knew uh, what these profiles did. And so we just dropped that and replaced it by so-called distributions and as you can see uh, if you just compile opencast you will already build several disti different distributions for opencast which is an admin node which is an all-in-one node and uh, also a developer node uh, which is the presentation server uh, before we already uh, always called it engage we now call it presentation because we hope it makes things a little bit more obvious for new users and finally uh, we have uh, configuration for worker you can add more if you want but this are the default configurations so um, let's have a look at the files you see that uh, some of the folders that have been here before are now missing for example there's no bin older folder ma anymore um, no lib folder and so on and so forth but there are also some new folders which is uh, for example assemblies and then finally build build is not there if you download opencast build is only there after you've built opencast because um, if we have a look at the contents of build this is actually where all the distributions uh, that have been built end up so uh, 
everything you need on your system to run Opencast is now in these files. And if you want to run, an, for example, an all-in-one server, you can just copy over this file and be done with it. So you don't need anything else. And, uh, well, let's head to uh, this one. Uh, for development, it's really, really nice to have this automatically extracted. So this is the development version, which uh, kind of is uh, the all-in-one version down here, just extracted. Not kind of, it's actually this, it's actually the one uh, just extracted. And if you have a look at this one here, you will just notice that, okay, now you got a bin folder, you uh, also got some new folders, uh, which we haven't seen before, which for example is the data folder, which now contains all of the uh, data used by Opencast. Um, you still got etc, you still got docs, but uh, and you still got libs, but things look a little bit different if you have a look inside. And uh, most important is probably the etc folder. You'll see that now there are a lot of uh, configuration files in here. Some of them are built automatically, some of them are uh, from the main etc folder you've seen before. And uh, Probably the most important thing I should uh, let you know that uh, before configuration was mainly done in the file called config.properties. It's still here, but it's built now automatically by Apache Caref, and most of the configuration is not in here anymore. Actually, you probably never want to modify this file, but you will always modify custom properties instead. So just having a short look inside. Um, oh, sorry. I want to edit etc custom properties. I haven't been in the folder. So uh, this is what uh, the config properties before looked like. So there's are not a lot of changes to this. And uh, you would then just, well, this is something you will always modify, for example. Um, another quick hint at the configuration uh, property down here, which is specifies the hosts Opencast listen to, and by default Opencast will now only listen to local host, meaning that it will not be accessible from any external uh, host. If you want to have a public Opencast uh, distribution or public setup of Opencast, you can just uncomment this and it will work. But it just to remember you because this is new and uh, people tend to not read the documentation because they know what to do and uh, this is probably something some people will stumble upon. Okay, so uh, far so good. Uh, we could then now try to start up Opencast. Uh, maybe we'll just do that. So uh, on, as before, you need an Apache Active Message uh, Active Active MQ. It's actually the Active Message Query, yes. Uh, running, and uh, I don't have one, so I we'll need to start one up. I use System Controller Start Active. Active MQ service. Maybe I didn't add one. I'm actually confused, but let's try this anyway. And then ha just let's have a look at the status. It says it's up and running. So uh, let's try to start an open cast. And we just start it by running slash bin slash start open cast. We now need to wait for a second uh, as was well the same before. And now we have an open cast that's up and running. It will 
all uh, still starts the bundles and uh, before you probably notice that usually you would see all the logs running through here uh, you still can have that because uh, you can just say log tail and it will run through but uh, through this interactive console you can interact with your open cost and do some stuff and so on but uh, you don't have that if you run as, as a service but well here we go so you see that there's actually some stuff happening uh, hope that's already started up so let's try to access this one to on localhost 8080 and here we go so that was my quick tips row cost 2.1 uh, I hope it will help you and give you a short overview about uh, what the race did and what happened there will be probably a maintenance release for this in March, at least that's the target for now, there's nothing final. Uh, OpenCast 2.2, uh, the feature freeze will be in early April and the release will probably be on 15th of June, but uh, again there will be an announcement of about this. And then there's still the legacy release of OpenCast 1.7, which will be um, probably in early March next year or something like that. But again, uh, wait for an announcement about this. So, goodbye!